Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. If you've been a subscriber for a while, you know my general feelings on Ibanez. Even though I'm a metal player, stereotypically metal guitars aren't really my thing. I'm not huge into the pointy guitars with flat fingerboards. And I'm definitely not into the model names that read like Wi-Fi codes. I don't care how quote unquote useful they are to identify the specs. It's like that Homer Simpson meme. As soon as I see those longer Ibanez names, I'm out. I'm back in the shrubbery. They can get obnoxious. So right off the bat then, this is one of my favorite Ibanez models. It's called the FR800. Only five characters. Love it. And in terms of tone per dollar, this is one of the best Ibanez offerings this year. And in fact, in my opinion, one of the best from any of the major brands in 2020. And why is that the case? Well, let's take a closer look. Now, if these reviews are sponsored, I like to be transparent about that. Ibanez has compensated me for my time to put this video together, and Priority in the Queue helps pay for the editors, and the mix engineer keeps everything going. Really nice since AdSense, especially at the beginning of the year, is total trash. But they don't have a say on my opinions, they know how much I've made fun of Ibanez names in the past, and yet they were still brave enough to send me this guitar for a review. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's get into it. When it comes to look, this is one of the more unassuming models in Ibanez's 2020 lineup. So much so that when I did my Ask a Fish reaction video on the new models, I completely glossed over the FR800. Compared to the RG6PPBF whatever, the tropical seafloor one, this one is much more modest. Not boring, but me with my moth-like attention, I was drawn to all the shiny ones. That being said, that sleek, flat black look is also super popular this year, where the emphasis is more on features and specs rather than on being flashy. So, with that said then, let's get into the specs. The body is made of Nyato, which is like an Asian mahogany. The FR body shape itself is quite interesting. This isn't actually a new shape for Ibanez, but it has been out of production for a while and they brought it back with a bang for 2020. It's kinda TE inspired, but I like how Ibanez has put their own 
ibanez spin on it. They haven't done what a lot of other companies do and just basically straight up copy the Fender design from the 1950s. In addition to the modified outline, there's a nice long forearm bevel, a matching body bevel on the back. It has classic influences, but with modern aesthetic and ergonomic updates. Then it has a roasted bolt-on maple neck and a Palferro fingerboard. Now, not only is this dark natural look great, but roasting the maple, or baking it, depending on who you're talking to, taking all the moisture out makes it less susceptible to atmospheric changes like temperature and humidity. Greater neck stability, which is awesome when you're touring or traveling, taking it to new places with different climates, or even if you're keeping it at home so you don't have to set it up as much with the changing of seasons or whatever either. The neck has a very noticeable scarf joint. What's interesting is that scarf joints used to be a very undesirable feature. Guitar snobs hated scarf joints, but now not only are they more accepted, but in some cases they're actually desirable. Because generally, if done right at least, glued wood is actually stronger than the actual wood itself. Maybe it doesn't look as high-end as a single piece of wood, but that's a whole other debate that we won't get into. Then the Powerfire Fingerboard. This started becoming more commonly used after the CITES restrictions on rosewood, and even though the restrictions have been lifted, at least as far as guitars are concerned, Palferro is very much still in use. Totally on board with this. Any move that leads to greater environmental sustainability is good with me. And I'm not sure if they stained it, but on a lot of the early guitars that used Palferro, it looked quite light and a little cheap. Here, it's essentially the same color as the roasted maple. It's very dark. It almost looks like they're both made of the same wood when they're not. And it's also very smooth with a wood grain more like ebony. Black block inlays works well with the overall visual theme and also looks better than when companies use super cheap looking plastic perloid with uh, giant block inlays. Now in terms of construction quality, fit and finish, I can't find anything wrong with it. Smooth, clean finish, neck fits perfectly snugly in the pocket. Now bear in mind this is one that Ivan has sent to me directly, not one I picked up at a retailer. But generally they don't try to give too much special treatment since it looks pretty bad if I give something a good review set expectations, and then the ones you find in stores don't live up to them. In fact, Ivan has also sent me a Seafoam Green High Performance RGA to demo in the same shipment, and that one does have a ding. But yeah, I won't talk too much about that one now. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one, which will be out soon, I hope. Back to the neck on this one, it's all well oiled, so with a satin finish, it feels so sleek and quick which is a staple of Ibanez guitars. Now, it does have pretty standard Ibanez neck and fingerboard specs, Wizard 3 neck shape, very flat 16-inch fingerboard radius, 25 and a half inch scale length. So if you like all that, you'll love this. Coming from the world of Epiphones, I'm still not so used to such a flat fingerboard with like a thin D neck shape. There's a lot of flatness on both sides of the neck. Though, I do get the advantages. It's supposed to be better for bends and quick runs and stuff like that. But even if you're not so into normal Ibanez guitars and neck specs, because of the different body shape, it does have a different vibe. 24 jumbo frets, nice fret work, no sharp edges or anything like that. In fact, it's been a long time since I've seen bad fretwork on any guitar in that thousand-ish dollar price point. And I love how you don't have to pay top dollar or take import guitars to a tech immediately to get a decent playing experience out of the box anymore. And you can experience all 24 of these frets quite easily thanks to the rounded heel. That's another one of these modern ergonomic Ibanez updates I was talking about earlier, and it's sculpted really comfortably for resting your palm up there. So not only does the neck feel great, it's also super easy to navigate, even in the dark, thanks to the lumen lace. Glow in the dark side markers. How has this not been a more common thing until recently? So, so useful. Now, Ibanez, being a Japanese company, has a great relationship with Goto, and that's worked to the FR800's advantage. Like a lot of other better spec guitars in their 2020 lineup, this comes with Goto Magnum T locking tuners. Goto is one of my favorite hardware companies. All their stuff feels so solid, the tuners especially. Goto has some of the most satisfyingly substantial thumb screws in the game. Then I'm not sure what the nut is, it looks a little messy, but the material doesn't seem bad, and in terms of stability, I didn't have to retune that often while tracking the demo. Now something I wasn't so sure about until I picked this guitar up myself is the monorail bridge. Again, coming from the world of Gibsons, I'm relatively new to low-profile bridges in general, and the ones I have played usually have all been the hip shot style, like with the outer enclosure. The monorail looks a bit weird, a bit disjointed. And I wouldn't say it's my favorite type of bridge now, but the saddles are nice and rounded, which is very important 
for comfortable chugs. I'm actually kind of surprised it doesn't come with a hip shot style bridge or like the Gibraltar, seeing as they're super popular on these kinds of ultra modern spec guitars in 2020. But the most massive feature, what has people most excited about this guitar is the bare knuckles in such an affordable overall package. If you're not familiar with why this is such a big deal, Bare Knuckle is one of the hottest names in passive pickups right now. Each of these Aftermath humbuckers are hand wound in the UK. And even before you factor in shipping, they're pretty pricey. If you order this exact set from the website, even before tax and shipping, you're looking at parting with about 250 pounds sterling. As of filming, that's like just over 320 bucks. And bearing in mind the MSRP of the entire guitar is about $1,000, that's huge. And of course, it's not just that they're such good value in this guitar. Part of the reason that they are so pricey is, well, the custom hand-etched Battle One covers, but also they sound great as well. So check this out. We're going to hear what it sounds like by itself. I'm running through the PV6505 Plus boosted with the Horizon Devices Precision Drive with Glenn Fricker's Mesa 4x12 IR for Dirty, then the Marshall DSL100H with Amp Reverb on through a Two Notes Silver 77 2x12 IR for Clean. Bare knuckle aftermaths are so cool, and that's coming from someone who's more into actives generally than passives. The bare knuckles have this signature chunk. I mean, the chugs and the zeros are so satisfying. So the pickups are great, especially with the black battle worn covers. I know I've mentioned them twice now, but they just look phenomenal. I'm not sure about this control layout though. I would have preferred a push pull to split the pickups, I find it more intuitive than a mini toggle. And then I'm not sure what's up with this other mini toggle for a pickup selector. It's really small and stubby. Would have liked to see a longer tip maybe to make it easier to use. That being said, I like to focus on the positives and there are those as well. The mechanism itself feels solid and satisfyingly clicky. And I do like the placement on the upper horn. It's kind of where I'm used to it being. Yeah, so believe it or not, Ibanez makes more than just the RG, the RGA and like the gem. Well, I guess now it's the PIA, but you know what I'm saying. There's also other models like this one. Even when it comes to metal focused guitars, Ibanez is more than just a one trick pony. On the visual front, I kind of love the overall sleek black theme. Kind of wish they'd done something with the logo, maybe made it glow in the dark or something like on the Axion labels. But 1099 for a bare knuckle aftermath equipped guitar, 
That's nuts. Ibanez's Indonesian made guitars have come a long way in the past couple of years. They used to have a terrible reputation when it came to quality and consistency. In fact, the first one that I tried, the trem route in the top didn't match up with the route in the body. That's, it was bad. But as last year's Axion labels and this year's FR800 prove, these Indonesian made models now have the build quality for Ibanez to experiment with high feature specs without breaking the bank. And as a budget conscious consumer, I am all for it. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are of course just my opinions and I'd love to know what you think. So let me know in the comments. Subscribe and make sure to hit the notification bell if you haven't already, that actually really helps out. Thanks to Ibanez for sending this guitar for the review and the loop for mixing everything. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.